Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to an amazing build that uh, me, you, and many other people are looking forward to on the channel. So this is a Skymaster F14 and uh, yes, it's a fantasy, fantasy scheme. Many people have reached out and said that in the unboxing video and that's okay because uh, these are just toys, they're just fun things to play with and uh, we enjoy flying them. So the F-14 is gonna be an awesome build. So stay tuned and we will get into the first steps of this build. All right guys, if you're here for the gear painting, just hold tight because we gotta weigh all the parts on the F-14 and then we'll get into the gear painting. So hang tight. Dang, I love the red on this plane. All right guys, so generally the first video we would go through the equipment on the aircraft. Um, I didn't realize how popular the, the weight of the aircraft was. I did that on the A-10 when I built it. And uh, obviously anybody that lives in a country where there's a very, very strict weight restriction, the weight is very, very important. So um, quite a few of you guys have reached out and said, please do the weights on all the parts of the aircraft. So we don't have the parts for this aircraft yet. They are en route right now. Uh, they're in shipping. And uh, so what we're gonna do for the first part of this video is we are gonna weigh all the components of the aircraft. And uh, the second part of this first video will be removing the landing gear and painting it. So that's gonna be the first episode. In episode number two, uh, the equipment should be here by then and we'll start to go through all the equipment and, uh, and all the parts we're gonna be using on this plane and then get into the, the rest of the builds. So that's what this first video is gonna be focused on is number one, the weight, number two, taking out the gear, painting the gear, it's gonna be a good video. So thanks guys for watching. Don't forget if you're watching this, to hit that thumbs up button down below. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to the channel already. It's free to do so. And uh, it's ultimately the, kind of the number one thing that supports the channels really. So anyways guys, let's weigh these things and uh, see what this aircraft comes in at. All right guys, so the first one that's a little bit of a challenge to deal with is the fuselage. So uh, my little scale, it, it's too much weight for my little scale. So uh, me by myself with my apron on, 218.8. We'll just double check that. Two eighteen point eight. So that's what we've got for myself. Now me with the fuselage. Two thirty eight point one. And we'll just measure it one more time. Two thirty eight point one. So I'm gonna list all of these weights in pounds and also grams as well too. So uh, for all of us metricies, we uh, can use the grams and uh, for the Americans <laughs> and anybody that's uh, on the Imperial system, we can use the pounds. So 238.1 minus 218.8 is 19.3 pounds, uh, 8,762 grams. Now what does that include? Well, uh, of course it includes all the air stuff that uh, that's in the fuselage. Uh, that includes the swing wing mechanism, the swing wing actuators, the rear fuel, fuel tanks, which you can't take out unless you take out the wing system. Okay, so that's in there. Uh, obviously the landing gear as well too is in there. And the front tank has been removed. So that's basically what the fuselage plus the parts that are in the fuselage includes. Okay, so my little scale is in grams, so we'll write all the grams down first and then calculate it out. So we've got our vertical stabs. The first one is 303 grams. Second one, 307 grams. Uh, horizontal stabs, 
261. Second one, 263. So a little lesson for you, uh, for the Americans watching this, basically 454 grams, so when we're talking about grams, 454 grams equals one pound. That's the conversion. So um, when we look at these, these items, that's what it ends up being. Okay, so we're gonna measure the nose section next, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cockpit out just so we can measure those items separately. So I'm gonna yank that out and we'll measure these items. All right, guys, this is uh, quite frustrating trying to get this cockpit out. Now, um, I think that when SkyMaster puts these planes together, they put all of their cockpit pieces through the front, or through the, sorry, the joint in the fuselage and get it in place. Now it's beautifully mounted, all that stuff, but uh, it's an absolute nightmare to try and get it out through the hatch opening. So I've been fighting with this thing for about 30 minutes now and uh, still fighting with it. So it's uh, not a lot of fun, but uh, working on it. So if uh, basically if this black piece here was gone, this would just slide right out the back. But obviously we can't do that because this cockpit needs to be removable because you're gonna join these fuselage pieces together and have to get the cockpit out at some point. So gonna continue fighting with this thing and uh, gotta get this cockpit out. Well, success. So basically you gotta get those cockpit pieces twisted completely sideways, push the fuselage out a little bit and it just works. Okay, so let's uh, measure up these cockpit pieces. So uh, the seat here has a screw which uh, just goes through the, uh, the bottom part of the, the cockpit. So anyways, that, uh, that is removable. So probably can't get it out without doing that. Anyways, cockpit piece uh, rear is 330 grams. Uh, cockpit piece front. Now the seat screwed in from the sides, so you really don't have much access there. But uh, that's 318 grams. All right, so front fuselage, which of course includes the landing gear. Hopefully we can get that on there. So that's uh, the front uh, nose sections, 2,050 grams. Okay, so thrust tube number one. We are at 326 grams. Thrust tube number two, 324 grams. Okay, so we've got tail cones here. We'll just measure those together. So tail cones are 110 grams. Now we've got our intakes. Now these intakes may be cut down in length a little bit depending on the engine you're using, but uh, the intakes together are 104 grams. So this is all really light parts, but keep in mind that this plus the tail cones, that's half a pound in weight, right? So it, uh, it does, those, those grams do add up if you're trying to save weight. All right, so next thing we'll measure is the wings. So we'll do our right wing first. Okay, so right wing comes in at 1,300 and we'll just call it 90 grams. And our left wing comes in and Call it 75. All right, so getting down to the last bits here, guys. Um, so we'll weigh all of the remaining items here on the table. So our front fuel tank is 250 grams. Now our radome nose cone without the, uh, the structural support piece is 72 grams. And our structure for the nose is 88 grams. So tail hook is 61 grams. And we've got the chin pod, 28 grams. Um, I'm just doing these separate because they are 
uh, separate from the fuselage. So these are the engine rails that you bolt in place. And those are 57 grams. And just because we're counting grams and these weren't in the fuselage, these are the pieces that hold the main access points open. So those are nine grams. Okay, so uh, fins, put those together. Those are 76 grams. Now I'm just doing all the critical items here and we'll, uh, we'll do the ordnance last. So um, with regards to the parts and stuff, uh, we will include all of the parts. And the reason for that is you can't really assemble the aircraft without all the hardware. Now you may not use all of this hardware, which is fine, but uh, we'll measure it just because. So that's 487 grams for all the hardware. Uh, we've got all four air tanks, which we may not end up using because we've got the compressor. That's 178 grams. Uh, we've got the two large drop tank mounts. Those are 313 grams. And then we've got our ordnance pylons. And we'll just include all this stuff together because it does, does all kind of work work together. So all of the ordnance mounts together is 298 grams. And then what we'll do is we'll just take a quick tally of all the ordnance together and uh, we'll just do that as a total number. Okay, so we got 110, 117, 138, 149, 183, and 202. All right, so that's the tally of all of the things for the airplane. So what I'll do is I'll total this up minus the ordnance. Uh, we'll just have the ordnance uh, stuff mounted or listed separately. And let's take a look at what this comes in at. All right, so here is our tally. So basically everything uh, to make the airplane fly, so not the drop ta tank mounts, not the ordnance mounts or the ordnance, comes in at uh, 1,000, sorry, 17,532 grams, of course, 17.532 kilograms, uh, which converts to 38.62 pounds. Now, if we add the ordnance stuff in, which is that number right there, that brings us to uh, 19,045 grams, 19 kilos, or 41.95 pounds. Remember, if you're wanting to find out pounds on any of these items, just divide it by 454. There's 454 grams in a pound, and that'll tell you how many pounds each of those items is. So that is our weight on this aircraft. Um, I, I wasn't really any, didn't have any expectations, so that to me seems, seems reasonable. All right, so next thing we have to do with this F-14 is we have to get it on the build table and we are going to get the the main swing wing uh, portion pulled out when we get the swing wing uh, portion pulled out uh, of course we're going to check loctite on everything because we know from past experience that uh, the company that manufactures these planes also known as SkyMaster, doesn't tend to loctite anything so uh, we will pull the swing wing mechanism out which we need to anyways to get the gear out uh, we're going to loctite that we're going to pull the gear out we're going to pull the gear apart we're going to paint the gear we're going to treat the gear we're going to do all that stuff so that's one of the main portions of this video so that's the next step get that plane on the build table and start yanking the swing wing mechanism out all right guys, so I thought that maybe we could get this gear out without removing the swing wing mechanism, but ultimately this does need to come out because you can't get the tanks out without getting this out. We need to be able to service the tanks and to be able to put bungs in and leak test them and all that kind of stuff. So this does need to come out. All of these bolts anyways, they do need Loctite installed. Yes, there's no Loctite on any of them. Um, so there's just a series of hardware. Basically, we're gonna need to take off this, this piece here, the actual swing mechanism. And once we get that stuff out, it'll just slide through the other side. There's basically slots 
with the carbon former in the middle uh, that everything goes through. So that's how it all works. So I'm gonna continue to pull the hardware off of this side there. So before we go any further though, it is time for another episode of Tip Time brought to you by trusty bent screwdriver who's always close to my heart. This side, that side, I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is a very, very simple tip time, but uh, it helps to keep things organized for myself. Uh, when I'm doing a build like this, like we're working on the F-18 build over there, I've got multiple boxes or containers that I'll put everything in. When I'm doing something like uh, the F-14 here where you've got bolts coming out of the gear, bolts coming out of the swing wing mechanism, I like to use these little containers that I also will mix epoxy in and it just helps to keep everything separate. Yes, you could just simply throw them in a metal bowl like that, but then they just get mixed up. So quick little tip time for you. <laughs> All right, guys, look at the size of that pivot point. That is absolutely incredible. Um, wow, that is nuts. So we've got everything removed here from the one side. So all we're gonna do now is go to the other side. And essentially this is just going, assuming everything works properly, to slide out. It's not easy to do. With one hand, I think I might need to unbolt that other gear. Yes, I definitely will. Basically this piece right here, this crossbar or I-beam or beam from on the other side is preventing that, uh, that, that swing mechanism from coming out. So we do need to unbolt the gear before we can get this out. So keep that in mind, obviously, when we're putting this back together, we need to get the gear in place, not have it bolted in, put the swing wing mechanism back in, then bolt the gear in place. All right, Skymaster, when it comes to the front of this plane, you have one great thing and one very not so great thing. Uh, so it evens out. Anyways, the, uh, the canopy is quick release, which I didn't know. So right there are two latches. So if you slide those in, it releases from the canopy. Very, very smart, Skymaster, that's awesome. Now, the, uh, the part that they're not so good at is, I've never seen this, I haven't seen this before. So if you look right there, um, they put a nut on the underside of this front gear. Now, you've got okay access to the front ones. Problem is, there's also a nut at these back ones as well. Um, this is gonna be really not fun. So the tool I've come up with to do this is a quarter inch um, back end on the nut driver, and then we've got a seven mil um, nut driver. Now if you take a quarter inch wrench and slide that over the nut driver, as you can actually go like that and get it in there. So I'll show you on the one that I haven't done yet. This is where I need a camera person, right like that. So that's how this is working. Now I hope that uh, this works on the back side. I think it will. Now you could conceivably just unscrew the cylinder, unscrew the front gear, Problem with that is you've got a bunch of bolts going through cross members and everything joining this gear together. This gear needs to come out, those bolts going through these cross members and everything, because there'll be one on the outside there, they need to get Loctited. Um, so we, we don't necessarily need to paint these areas because they're hidden, but uh, we need to get this gear out to Loctite that. All right, so painting gear, how are we gonna do this? Basically, um, you don't really need a ton of stuff, but it just takes time to disassemble uh, everything here. So looking at the main gear, we are not going to be painting the main beam here, 
but we will paint everything else on the lower portion of the gear. So we do need to disassemble everything. Now one of the benefits of the Skymaster finish here is uh, it's already uh, a rough finish. Um, it looks like it's been uh, blasted a little bit after, after it was machined. So anyways, that's, that's a, a great thing because basically we don't have to uh, do anything special. We don't have to sand the metal. All we basically have to do is make sure we clean that up with acetone. Uh, that's a good option for using uh, cleaning uh, aluminum. Um, and then we're gonna use a primer, a self-etching primer. And uh, there's lots of different options for that. I actually like the Duplicolor better but uh, lots of different options for that. Now, some of the areas we gotta pay attention to are the shiny metal bits, which is gonna be like this cap down here. We've got that, which is kind of halfway in between, but uh, those are the pieces that we will be painting, and uh, we need to protect things like the actual plunger or shaft in the whole assembly. Now, they did paint the uh, outside of the wheel, I think that may be just a standard thing they paint, I don't know. But uh, we'll be painting basically everything on this. So um, the other gear, same thing. The front uh, is much the same as the mains. The, the wheels did not get painted on any sides, so we have to take, um, well, we gotta take them apart anyways, but. Uh, and then we won't be painting the upper rails here, just everything down below that. So there's just no reason to paint that. I mean, if you're gonna keep this all together and paint it, sure, paint it, but uh, we're gonna be disassembling this. And same thing, we've got a nice rough finish already on here. So we just need to make sure we clean the metal really nice. So that is what we're doing. So step number one, I've already done this, is I took pictures from all different angles on this gear. Some of the really important details here, and these are, um, we can basically catch this just in keeping these parts together, but like all this washer assembly here, right? You wanna make sure that you've got that back in place when you reassemble everything. So just all those little bits and little things you wanna, wanna keep track of. So step number one, Dis well, take pictures of the gear. Step number two, disassemble the gear. I'm gonna disassemble the gear on my uh, one of my benches here, and I'm actually gonna put down some, some masking tape uh, in between these gear just to keep everything separate, and then we'll just start uh, disassembling everything on these gear. All right, guys, so we are all disassembled here. I've started prepping some of the items. Uh, this doesn't really need to be a super complicated process, but basically the, the key thing is your prep. So if you had gear with all that shiny surface, uh, you would want to either sand it lightly with sandpaper. Um, generally on landing gear and kind of complex items, it's not really possible. The other option is to, uh, there's lots of different products out there that uh, etch aluminum or metal. Uh, you can also just use vinegar as well too. I know that sounds dumb, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty basic and uh, ac actually it's pretty acidic. But um, it, it works quite well as well too. I've used that in the past on, um, on some aluminum tubes. So anyways, in this case, uh, we're just going to, uh, to sand this uh, little shiny piece a little bit first because the rest of it is all, all good to go. So before we move into the shop, uh, let's talk a little bit about the different products. So I'm just gonna do this one landing gear on the video, uh, and I'm also gonna do them one at a time just so I can get this one put back because we've got the rotating mechanism and stuff. Um, it just makes life easier if we've got something to match it to. So I'm gonna do the, uh, the other main and the front one um, off camera. And if there's anything different with the front one, I'll, I'll show you guys that. But let's talk a little bit about products here. So we're gonna get all this all cleaned up with acetone. Obviously make sure you wear gloves and stuff and PPE when you're using this stuff. So we're gonna give the, everything a wipe down with acetone. And then we can talk a little bit about uh, what we're gonna actually spray this with. So <clears throat> you can uh, get different um, etching primers, self-etching primers. 
Uh, I like the Duplicolor one myself. The nozzle sprays better. And the other thing is if you are using uh, Duplicolor paints, obviously there's no compatibility issues there. Uh, Rust-Oleum also makes a self-etching primer as well too. Um, and so those are all, both of those are, are decent options. You may have something else that you use, but basically use a self-etching primer. Um, you've got a couple different options here. You've got just the standard Rust-Oleum uh, paint and primer. Obviously, we're, we're doing the self-etching primer. Uh, this is great for metal and stuff, but uh, those are, are good options available. Like, I get that from Home Depot. Uh, you can also use appliance epoxy as well, too. This is nice because it's a little bit more durable material uh, or finish. And uh, so this is uh, also a great option as well, too. And then you can also use Dupacolor. Um, paints and I like the Olympic white. Uh, there's lots of different matches and stuff. Obviously, I think this is a GM color, um, but that's th those are the different options. All of them work fine. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure quite yet what I'm going to use. I'm probably going to end up using the Dupli color, but uh, anyways, those are the materials that we will be using to paint that gear. So we're gonna get this cleaned up with the acetone and then we'll head into the, uh, into the new shop. Uh, we've set up kind of a temporary spray area for when we have to paint doors and trim and everything for our house. And uh, that's why we set up the temporary spray area. So anyways, let's get this done. Let's chit chat and uh, more painting. All right, so all of our parts have been cleaned. Uh, be careful with the acetone, it eats certain plastics. So like the 3D piece there, we definitely don't want to, uh, to chance that and put that in the acetone because it'll probably melt. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna prep all the holes. Now what I mean by that is like the brake assembly here, we're gonna put a piece of paper inside the hole. Now the alternative to this is you can um, like, this piece right here as an example, if you have the right drill bit, you could drill that out afterwards or just run the drill bit by hand through. Problem with that is then you run the risk of chipping the paint as well. So um, I find it better to, uh, to just put uh, tubes or uh, prep material basically, figure out a way to do it inside there. Some of the stuff's not such a big deal like where the air cylinder mounts to this linkage. Um, not a critical item, but somewhere like this where you've got a pin actually going through, uh, you wanna make sure you keep that in, uh, in relatively free order. So all of those parts have been washed. We're gonna keep the air nipples on or the little pieces of tubing on there. Uh, reason for that is when we put the gear back together, we've got it uh, indicated on what tube goes where. The other thing is it protects the nipple obviously, and uh, it's a great way to do that, so. All right guys. I. Uh, Figured I'll show you how I prep these things. So this is the kind of the goal of what you're looking for. And uh, what I do is I just take this stiff paper. It's not really, I guess you could just use standard like eight and a half by 11 white paper, but this is a little bit thicker. And uh, I find the easiest thing to do is roll it around an Allen key like that. And then we just pop it through. Now, in this case, that's a little bit too, uh, too big of an Allen key. Um, great time in the video as well, too, to thank everybody that has donated to the shop build. Uh, thank you, everybody that uh, has sent through some funds whether it's big donations, small donations, it's all very, very helpful. And uh, it's definitely getting used on the shop and it's going to make sure that that place looks absolutely awesome. There we go. So thank you everybody. Do really appreciate it and uh, thank you. So that's kind of what you're looking for there. In this case, this one was fairly tough to get through, which is fine. Uh, this one was a little bit loose and it still is a little bit loose as the paper unwinds a little bit, it'll be fine, but it doesn't need to be super tight. But uh, that's kind of how you, or at least how I prep these openings. All right, so we've got all of our parts prepped that we're gonna paint. So a little update for you guys. Um, obviously we're in the shop now or the new shop and uh, it's coming along nicely. We've got this 
side here all polyed off and set up to be able to spray trims and doors for our house but we're going to use it right now to spray this landing gear so if you are interested in watching the construction of our house uh, which covers some of the shop and stuff like that there's a link to my other channel down below it's really not that exciting compared to like building planes and flying planes but anyways um, that's what we're doing so here we are we've got uh, all of our parts laid out uh, we've got our primer ready we have to give it a good shake um, I've got this ladder set up as my drying rack so we can hang parts off of there and uh, pretty straightforward so uh, just read the instructions on your etching primer so you want to make sure you're wearing your mask you've got good ventilation do all the safety stuff it's worth it So now is the time in the video when you take a picture, you send it to the owner, David, and you say you wanted your gear to be green, right? All right, guys, we've got a nice coating of the etching primer on there. Turned out really nice, happy with it. All right, guys, so we are now going to be using the white paint. So we're gonna use the Duplicolor paint. I can't remember if I said that in the previous clip. And of course, when you're painting, you want to avoid runs. And how you do that is you do multiple light coats. So again, follow the instructions on the product you're using. Uh, we're probably gonna use two, maybe three coats of that material and uh, it'll make the gear look outstanding. So let's get to painting. Okay guys, so we've moved on to the front gear. Basically the front gear needed to come all apart. Now the reason it needed to come all apart is the steering arm here, this guy, uh, I don't wanna paint white, but uh, in order to get this guy out of the gear, the struts need to be separated, which we have done. So these are all cleaned, all ready to go, all prepped. Uh, this unit here is the actual steering system that mounts over top of this piece. So you just have to be careful, obviously, like I talked about with the main gears and just prep everything. Now, none of these front wheels were sprayed. So we've stuck a little sponge in there because the bearings just popped out no problem. So the sponge is gonna keep the, pipe, the paint out of the bearing area. Uh, last thing we have to do here is just put a piece of airline over top of the nipple just to keep paint out of that. So, all right guys, so I'll share the disaster what happened with the nose gear here with you. Again, this stuff is hard to share, but uh, hopefully we all learn from it. So I painted this this morning and uh, what happened was, uh, I think all the items were too cold. So I was getting a bunch of fish eyes is what was happening, but uh, there's kind of two reasons that you, you get fish eyes. Number one, contaminants on the surface. Well, I clean these surfaces like crazy. Um, so I don't think it was moisture. I don't think it was contaminants. The other thing that it could be is temperature. Now, uh, where I'm in my in right now, okay. So the temporary shop here is roughly about 60, 65 degrees. Let's go take a look. Yeah, 64 degrees right now, um, which isn't bad, but that's the only thing that I can think of that would be causing those fish eyes. So what I did when I, start, when I put that first coat of paint on there this morning is I immediately saw that that happened, brought it inside, filled the container up with, um, with acetone and basically put the uh, all the parts in there and cleaned all the paint off, let it sit all day. And uh, so that was my frustrating disaster from this morning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure all these parts are 100% good to go. We're gonna give them another clean. This time I'm gonna use rubbing alcohol and I'm going to warm these parts up with my heat gun. And uh, I'm gonna bring them out into the new shop which is also about 65, 70 degrees. I turned the heat up in there earlier to be mid 70s. Uh, there, our, our full heating system's not in there yet. Um, and then we're gonna try another crack at painting these things. So I think warming them up is, is gonna be the key because we dealt with con contaminants uh, before. So anyways, back at this. Oh, another cool thing. 
um, David, the owner, I asked him, I said, David, you want the gear to be weathered or do you want it to be brand new and shiny? Now, I would just assume as the builder that we would be weathering the gear, but of course we don't wanna just make those assumptions. We know what happens when we make assumptions. Um, but anyways, we are weathering this gear and dirtying it up and making it look used to fit the aircraft, which is awesome. So basically what that means is we get this gear painted, shiny, new, and then we get to do some old fashioned modeling and dirtying up with some sandpaper, some black, some brown, um, do fun things like that just to make it look used. There is actually tons of pictures online of the F-14 gear, close-ups, great visuals of the gear, which is gonna be awesome. And we also have some uh, new graphics coming from Cali Graphics down in the US. Uh, that should probably be here in about a week. And um, so we're gonna, we're gonna kind of probably wait to do the weathering uh, until we can get all those graphics and stuff put on. So anyways, that's what's happening. Um, I'm gonna go outside and have try number two at painting the nose gear. All right guys, so just a little update for you. I'll throw some pictures in here. That heat of the material was definitely the key. So uh, I just put the self-etching primer on the front gear pieces, worked out beautifully, laid down flat, no fish eyes as you can see in the picture. So uh, check your temperatures if you're painting front gear, that's the key. Uh, if you live in cold Arctic tundra called Canada. So anyways, uh, we're gonna let that dry overnight and uh, we'll paint the, uh, the white tomorrow. And uh, we still have the other rear gear to paint. Um, I'm letting the, the first rear gear that we did dry for a couple days because it's, uh, I don't wanna get it uh, fingerprints on it or scratched or anything. It just needs to sit for a couple days, right? Um, that's one of those important steps that's kind of good with painting, but sucky with painting is you paint something and sometimes you just need to let it sit and that's okay. So anyways, that's it for the F-14 for tonight. Um, see you tomorrow. All right, so we've got all the parts of the F-14 other side gear ready to go. So we're gonna bring this out into the shop and uh, warm these parts up and start painting these guys with the etching primer. And then we'll put the white on the front landing gear, which should be ready by now. All right guys, so eventually in the shop, we're gonna have in-floor heating. So the concrete slab will actually be heated. But what I did with these parts is electric heater over there, just put the parts in front of the electric heater and uh, let them warm up substantially. And this was the ones that we painted last night that I was telling you about and turned out way better than the disaster we had on, uh, yeah, that would have been yesterday morning where everything was fish eyeing. So a little bit, uh, a little bit frustrating yesterday, but uh, anyways, we got it solved. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna paint the white on these parts that were primed, and then we're gonna put the self-etching primer on those parts that are warming up over there. Successful, successful painting session. So we got the white painted on the front gear. So that is all done, it's curing. We got the self-etching primer painted on all of the other main gear pieces. So next thing we have to do is just wait, let that stuff cure. So we're gonna let the white stuff, um, the stuff that we painted white, cure for a day or two before we put it back together. And we'll let the self-etching primer cure for about 12 to 24 hours before we put the white on it. So um, again, just follow the instructions for your paint manufacturer. So that is gonna be everything for the F14 first video. We got everything weighed in this video. We took the gear apart. We successfully painted it. I suspect the next video is going to be uh, weathering the gear and putting the uh, nomenclature or decals on the gear and making it look nice and dirty and putting it back together. So hopefully you guys are interested in seeing that portion as well, but it's gonna be fun to, uh, to weather the gear and make it look dirty, so. That is everything for this video, guys. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you have not done so already. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.